Hi everyone, this is Dr. Neha Khorke. Welcome to Zomio Classroom, Session 2. Today we will be discussing a case of lumbar spondylosis and we will see how this case was resolved, how the patient got better with homeopathy in spite of the pathology. Basically what I want to convey is that there is no person who will not benefit with homeopathy and there is no case that will not or that cannot be resolved with Zomio. Every case can be resolved however serious, however complicated, however easy or however difficult it is using Zomio. Let's start with the case of lumbar spondylosis. This is the case of a 39-year-old female, a homemaker who quit her job as an advisor for an insurance company a few months ago. She has been married since 10 years. Now her chief complaints are that she has been complaining of a lower backache since the past 7 years. It is a throbbing kind of a pain. There is a history of having slipped and developed swelling in the lumbar region 9 years ago and then she developed pain since 7 years. Currently she is not on any treatment although she has been taking allopathic medicines on and off. There is pain in the legs with the backache and as an associated complaint she also suffers from acidity or retrosternal burning. Now let us look at the modalities of her chief complaint. She feels better with hot fermentation by lying down but she is aggravated on rising, standing for long periods of time. She is aggravated in the winter season or in the cold weather. Bending forward also aggravates her and she suffers from morning stiffness that lasts for around 30 minutes. Now provisionally we can diagnose this three ways. When we need to diagnose a case, there are three things that we rely on when we diagnose. The first is the history that is given by the patient or elicit by the doctor. Second is the clinical examination that is done by the doctor. And lastly, the confirmatory diagnosis which is given by the investigations that are suggested. Now from the symptoms that we have already seen, we can think of three diagnoses that come to our mind. The first is a PID or a prolapsed intervertebral disc where the disc between two vertebrae protrudes out and this reduces the joint space which results in nerve compression and pain. Generally, a PID at the level of uh, the lumbar and sacral vertebrae will give rise to sciatica as well as the backache. The second is a spondylolisthesis in which one vertebra displaces over the other, again leading to nerve compression and pain. And the third pathology is a degenerative pathology that we see in lumbosacral spondylosis. We were still unsure as to what her final diagnosis was. Before we move on to clinical examination, let us see the other characteristics that this patient had. She complained of thick, white and delible, white staining, non-offensive leucoria. She had a vertigo of high places with no known cause. Completely thirstless patient. An intense desire for sweets and spicy foods. She always slept on her left side. Her dreams were occasional but of daily routine and she had offensive perspiration mildly offensive. Looking at her mind and life situation, there is an intense fear of insects, darkness, death. All fears exist without any reason since childhood. There is a brooding tendency. She is unable to forget things that hurt her for months or sometimes even years. She is an extremely reserved person with a bit of a reserved displeasure, will walk out if she is hurt by someone but will never express what she feels. She prefers being alone. She is extremely fastidious, gets irritated if there is a mess around her. She has a tendency towards weeping 
but she is quite aggravated by any kind of consolation. She will cry more when consolation is offered. She is very stressed. She lives in a joint family and so has a lot of workload. She wishes to separate, but she is unable to express her feelings. We now come to the clinical examination. In such a case, the spine is examined with the patient lying down as well as when the patient is standing. On standing, a loss of lumbar lordosis was noted. A LASIK test was performed. A LASIK test is also called a straight leg raising test. This is done when the patient is lying down, knee is extended and the hip is slowly flexed at different angles. Ideally, the patient is uh, is able to move the hip joint painlessly. However, if there is a pain that is experienced, especially between 30 and 70 degrees, then we say that LASIX test or SLR test is positive. And this indicates some sort of a pathology at the lumbosacral level. Now, pain was uh, aggravated on performing SLR, which is an indication that the lower lumbosacral nerve roots were inflamed. Investigations were suggested and done. An x-ray of the LS spine showed bulging of upper and lower end plates at L3, L4 and an MRI of the lumbar spine showed a mild posterior bulge at L4, L5, L5, S1 discs. This confirmed lumbosacral spondylosis. Apart from that, her blood test showed a mild anemia a mildly increased ESR, a total WBC count of 4,600 which was normal, platelets 2 lakh again normal, calcium normal. However, a vitamin D3 was extremely low at 7.9. Now here for the approach of totality, we decided to adopt the Kentian approach because the case has more characteristics at the level of mind and generals. However, let me tell you that the pathology cannot be ignored. Here is the totality that we took. Now, in the last session, I explained to you what is exactly totality. So, a totality of symptoms is an aggregation. However, a logical aggregation or a logical harmony of the most characteristic symptoms of the patient that we consider, the outward reflected picture of the internal essence of the disease, that is, of the affection of the vital force. This is to quote aphorism 7 of the Organon of Medicine, 6th edition, written by Samuel Hahnemann. And that is why we have taken the most characteristic symptoms of the patient in the totality. The first Three that we take are her fears. Why have we taken her fear of insects, fear of death, fear of darkness? Because for her age, these fears are a bit peculiar. And the fear of death was extremely intense, which is why we have taken these three symptoms first. The next that we took was brooding. We took brooding because this particular symptom has been extremely pervasive throughout the personality of the patient through so many years of her life. So for the intensity as well as the pervasiveness, we have taken on brooding. Then we also, according to the intensity, took on aversion to company, a characteristic attribute which is reserved displeasure. We took on um, fastidious, again, a characteristic symptom for this uh, patient because she would get irritated because of uh, uncleanliness. We have then taken on her general desires or cravings in food, which is the craving for sweets and the craving for spicy food. Then as the next physical general, which was characteristic, was that she always slept on the left side. So we have taken that as a uh, symptom in the totality. The next we have taken is the complete thirstlessness that this patient has displayed and the last is a characteristic physical particular 
which is vertigo of high places. Now, generally in people who have a history of say falling from a height and then developing a fear, we would never take this. But this patient never had any such history. She just had a fear, uh, sorry, a dizziness when she went to any high place, which is why we have considered this symptom as part of her totality because it is a peculiar manifestation of her internal ailment. Moving on to how we converted each of them into a rubric. The first three are fears. So if they are fears, they are naturally found in the mind chapter of any repertory. What we have done is we have taken this uh, or we have extracted these rubrics from the complete repertory. So fear of insects has become fear bugs insects. Fear of death is translated quite literally as fear death of. Fear of darkness becomes fear dark of. Brooding is directly converted into the rubric brooding. Company aversion to again a symptom of the mind. So aversion to company. Reserved. Then we took on reserved displeasure. Then we took on fastidious. That is the um, extreme um, tendency to be clean or particular. Craving for sweets we took on from the generalities chapter. So food and drinks, sweets, desires. Craving for spicy, food and drinks, spices, condiments, piquant, highly seasoned food desires. Sleeping on the left side was taken as sleep. So we went to the sleep chapter now. Sleep, position, side on left. Thirstlessness, although present as a rubric, we decided to use this as an eliminating symptom using a filter. And the final rubric, which is vertigo aggravated by high places, we have taken it from the chapter vertigo high places. So these are the rubrics that we have taken. I will repeat them again. Fear, bugs, insects. You can take a note of these. Fear, bugs, insects. Fear, death of. Fear, dark of. Brooding. Company, aversion to. Reserved. Reserved, displeasure. Fastidious. Food and drinks. Sweet desires. Food and drinks. Spices, condiments, frequent, highly seasoned food desires, sleep position, side on left, thirstlessness, which we will consider in the repertorization filter, and vertigo high places. Now, since we have already decided on the rubrics, let us now see how we can go about recording this in Homepad Zomio. The first thing that we can do is see there are two ways in which we can go about this either you can directly start recording the rubrics or you can create this patient in the software and then start recording rubrics in the first session uh, that you remember of learning disorders i had directly started recording the rubrics here let's do it the other way around let us create the patient first and then record the rubric so when i need to create a patient I click on patient, new case. It will ask me as a prompt, start a new case by create patient, select patient or speed case. Select patient is for those patients that are already have been, you know, whose data has already been recorded. But I will go for create patient. So now I just have to enter mandatorily the first name. I will just enter CM. Save. So now I have recorded the data of this patient. This patient has been selected and now I can start repertorizing this case using Zomio. The first symptom that I will take is fear of insects. Now instead of going the classic way first, I'll show you the quick symptom record. If you remember in our first session, the quick symptom record is here in the repertory section. Basically, this is the section that is very helpful to homeopaths 
who have just started or newly started their practice for whom converting symptoms into rubrics is a slightly difficult task. And it is also very useful for seasoned practitioners who would like to record the rubrics very, very fast. So the first rubric that we have is fear of insects. Now in this, what I can do is just type in fear. And when I type in fear, under the uh, mind chapter, there are different categories of fear. So morning, afternoon, evening, night. What I want is this, insects. So I select insects and here I have the rubrics that are linked to this word insects. So there are different types of insects. There are spiders, bugs, insects, cockroaches, flies. But what I want are in general insects. So I will choose this rubric, fear bugs insects, in which there are 20 remedies. And I will select this. This rubric is now recorded. The next rubric that I want to record is fear of death. Again, I can just look in this list, just scroll down this list or I can type here death and I will get the relevant symptom of fear of death. Again, here on the right hand side, I can see all the linked rubrics from different repertories. Complete, Kent, Boric, Lippy, Allen, Nair. I will select the first one which has the maximum number of remedies and that reference is from the complete repertory fear death of. All right. So I have recorded already two rubrics from our list which is fear bugs insects and fear of death. Now for the third fear which is the fear of darkness let me show you from another way. We'll go back to the classic way of um, level search. In this, I am going to show you how we can look for fear of darkness. Now here, this is the classic way that I am showing you, which is the level search. So from the complete mind chapter, I select from search, I select level search. And here I type fear. At the third level, I type dark. Why? Because Dark is a sub-rubric of the main rubric which is fear and that is why dark is found at the third level. So now I see I have directly jumped to fear of dark that has 125 remedies and I will select that rubric to be recorded. Okay, the next rubric that I want to record is brooding. Again, I can do this through level search. Or from this chapter itself, let me just type brooding. And it will internally search. Here in the count, it has given me 24 references for brooding, which means that brooding as the main rubric with a lot of sub-rubrics under it. I want to take the general uh, rubric of brooding. So I now select brooding. The next symptom is Company aversion 2. Again, let me show this to you using internal search. I am just typing in company. These are all uh, rubrics from the mind chapter. So that is why I am within the mind chapter of the complete repertory for now. All right. So company. Okay. The moment I have typed company, I can see the first rubric as company aversion 2. I can directly record the rubric from here or I can jump to the rubric. By just clicking on it, I jump to the rubric here, company aversion 2, I select it. Alright, and my last rubric uh, that I would like to show you using the classic view is reserved. Again, you can either start directly typing in reserved and here you are, we have jumped to reserved here. I will check this box and I have recorded reserved. Up till now, if you can see here on the left hand side, we have recorded six rubrics. Okay, we recorded fear of insects, fear of death, fear of dark, brooding, company aversion to and reserved. Now the next rubric that we have to record, 
we still have two more mental rubrics to record uh, which are reserved displeasure and fastidious okay let's uh, use the rep search this time so here we are now going to do a report research where we will generally search for uh, the keywords and we will see what is the result that we get i will now record reserved displeasure using repertory search what i need to do is press command s i repeat command s and now a window opens in which i need to just type the symptom or the keywords so i will be now typing reserved displeasure all right for reserved displeasure i now have 16 references so two references here i can see the different uh, references from uh, the different repertories for reserved displeasure if i want to see all of them again i will click on all let me record the rubric reserved displeasure from the complete repertory by checking this box the next rubric that i want to record is fastidious again pressing command s from the keyboard i get this pop up window where i type fastidious i select the word fastidious and search or i just press enter from my keyboard and i get 12 references for fastidious selecting fastidious now the next two rubrics that i have are the desires for food so we have desire for sweets and we have desire for spicy all right so we will be recording those rubrics also using the command s feature so pressing command s from the keyboard i now type in desire sweets and i get the references for desire sweets now why um, you know it is uh, more convenient to uh, record using especially these type of rubrics uh using command s uh is that in a lot of repertories uh desire for any kind of foods are given in different chapters like in complete it's given in generalities in kent it's given in the stomach chapter in gentry again it's given in the stomach chapter and so on so uh sometimes uh you know we get confused in which chapter are food desires present so this becomes a very uh, important uh, way or sorry it's a very useful way i would say in which you can record the, the rubrics of desire so we now have 104 references i will record the first one which is from the generalities chapter of the complete repertory food and drinks sweet desires the next rubric that i want to record is food and drinks spices desires command s again desire spices okay we have three references here we will take the first one which has 123 remedies food and drinks spices condiments piquant highly food desire highly seasoned food desires let's record this rubric okay so we have recorded quite a bit of rubrics using uh, the quick symptom record the classic uh, level search feature the classic internal feature and the uh, repertory search we will now go on to the repertorization sheet so this is a repertorization sheet that has got 730 remedies i do remember that we have two more rubrics to record so i will show you now the easiest way in which you can uh, record rubrics which is also the quickest way and that is why the name quick repertorization so here i just have to type in the uh, keywords and the software intelligently directly records the rubric which is most relevant to the keywords that i have typed now this effectively eliminates the middle step in which i have to search for the rubric and then record it and that is why this is an extremely 
fast and rapid way in which I can record rubrics in the repertorization sheet. We still have two more rubrics to record. One is sleeping on the left side. So I type in sleep position left. All right, when I type that, uh, the rubric that you see is directly recorded from the complete repertory sleep chapter. Position side on left, which has 39 remedies. And the final rubric that I want to record is the characteristic particular, which is vertigo high places. So, again, in the quick rep search bar, I type vertigo high places. And now the rubric has been recorded from the uh, vertigo chapter of the complete repertory, which is vertigo high places. All right. So now this is my final repertorization sheet. You can see that it has got uh, 734 remedies. Now I have to drill down and refine to just a few remedies to then finally know which is the remedy for this patient of lumbar spondylosis. Okay. Now uh, let us do something. Let's start applying filters. Okay, just like the last case, where if you remember from 770 odd remedies, we drilled down to just one. Okay, let us see if we can uh, achieve a similar kind of result here, where we can drill down to say two or three or four remedies. All right, so here I have uh, the filters of uh, Zomio. And uh, if you remember, we had taken hurtlessness in the totality. So let us apply the filter of thirstlessness here. Okay. So I go to remedy property. Thirst as a filter is available in the remedy property filter. So here in the thirst, I select thirstlessness. So it de largely depends on the physician. Uh, if you want, you can select just one parameter from here. If you want, you can select some other parameters as well. Okay. As of now, I will be selecting only thirstless. I will apply this filter. And now from uh, 730 on, we have drilled down to 149 remedies. Now, I want to tell you why this filter is so important. Because the symptom of thirstlessness was so marked in the patient, you cannot ignore this kind of a symptom, which is why you want only those remedies that feature this particular symptom in them, that feature this particular symptom in their provers. And that is why we have applied this filter of thirstlessness. And it's very important because from 700 remedies, we have now drilled down to just 149. However, we still have uh, um, other filters available to us for our help. And that is why we will be applying a second filter here to know uh, whether we can drill this down further, okay? So, uh, let us apply the cross repertorization filter here. Now, in this, what I found extremely marked in this patient of lumbar spondylosis was her pervasive brooding, was her reserved uh, displeasure, and her vertigo of high places, which I found peculiar. So I have taken these three rubrics to be the most important. Why cross repertorization is an extremely useful tool is that whatever rubrics that I select, I will be finally able to see only those remedies that are featured in all three rubrics or only the three rubrics that I have selected, which means that my list is going to drill down considerably and this is going to really help me to achieve the final prescription for the patient. So I have selected the most important uh, rubrics that I felt for this patient, which is brooding, reserve displeasure, and vertigo of high places. I apply this and now see, we have now just three remedies in front of us. We have natromure, we have staphysagria, and we have oromatalicum. Now, all we need to do 
is we need to compare the three to know which is the remedy that is most suited. Although uh, I can see in this list that Natrumur is uh, covering the maximum symptoms and even in the totality it is coming first. But as a conscientious physician, I want to be sure that Natrumur is the remedy for my patient. Okay, so now within this screen itself, uh, I can uh, compare these two or three remedies that I have and I can see which uh, is the remedy that is the final ideal prescription for my patient. So what I'll do is I'll do a right click on Natrumur and I will click on add to compare. I want to compare two remedies side by side. It will help me to get an idea as to which is the best remedy for my patient. I will right click on staff and click on add to compare and then I will just click on compare. When I click on compare, now in this window, I can see both the remedies side by side and I can compare them with regards to their characteristics and symptoms. Now, in this particular case, I want to compare them at their keynote level. Okay, so on the keynote level, if I am comparing them, what I am seeing are the keynotes of Staphysagria and the keynotes of Natrumuri article uh, seen side by side. So it is easy for me to read the symptoms of staph and then read the symptoms of natmur and then see finally which remedy I want to give to this patient. So uh, because she had a lot of uh, complaints at the level of the mind, uh, let's see what is written in the mind. Okay, so um, in natrumur here, what we can see is consolation aggravates, something that is there in our patient. Easily angered, aggravated uh, consolation, hateful to people who have offended him. Okay, what else can we see? An idea clings, preventing sleep. All right, so this can point out to a brooding tendency as well. Uh, let's move on to the confirmatory symptoms. All right, so even in the confirmatory symptoms, uh, what I can see is that my patient is veering more towards um, natrumur. Even in the clinical, it is giving me anemia and my patient is mildly anemic. So let us finally decide that we will be giving natrumur to this patient or do we want to uh, confirm this further? Let us confirm this further. Let us go through a reference book. Uh, the last time, if you remember, we had gone through Fatak. So this time, let's go through a different one. I right clicked on natrumur and I went to reference books. Let me um, take on one of the most sought after, one of the most uh, referenced reference books, which is uh, Lectures on Homeopathy by J.T. Kent. All right, so when I look at this, when I am going through this particular uh, remedy, okay, now in this again, I can see consolation, aggravated, unpleasant occurrences are recalled that she may grieve over them. So this is just a longer way of explaining brooding. Okay, so yes, so now I am seeing that um, through the keynotes as well as through this uh, reference book of Kent, I can see that Natrumur is the remedy for my patient. So I will be now finally prescribing Natrumur to this patient of uh, lumbar spondylosis. What I need to do is a right click and I will click on prescribe. Okay, now I type in for what I am prescribing Natrumur to this patient. The dosage is four pills and I want to give this thrice a day. Now in the 200 potency. The question is why thrice a day? Okay, 
uh, thrice a day because this patient has quite a deep uh, pathology, which is why I am prescribing this remedy thrice a day. So now this remedy has been prescribed for the patient. And I can see this prescription here in the follow-up section. Okay, that natrium mur has been prescribed. All right, so now um, let me show you. Uh, before that, uh, I'm very happy with this because uh, I am not just repertorizing, I'm able to record everything about the patient here. So right from case taking to the recording of rubrics to the prescription, I get to see everything here. I get to record everything here, store everything in Zomio. So this becomes simpler for me. It is a paperless process. I don't have a lot of files in the clinic. So everything is there here in this laptop. All right. Uh, so now let me see. Let's go through the prescription that was finally given. Uh, like I said, Natromure was prescribed on the basis of the totality. We saw that Natromure came up in the list. Uh, Natromure was given in the 200th potency thrice a day. However, let us remember that it is not just the medicine that we need to give as doctors. We need to also advise the patient on the do's and don'ts, on the other things that he needs to follow and do if, you know, he wants to get better. So it is not just the medicine, but even the ancillary and auxiliary advice that we give to the patient, which helps them to recover faster. All right. So the auxiliary treatment that we recommended were calcium supplements as well as uh, a dose of uh, vitamin D, 60K units or 60,000 units once in a week. She was also recommended shortwave diathermy or SWD for the affected joints as well as exercise training for strengthening of muscles. This is very, very important because we uh, see that spondylosis has a degenerative pathology. So if the bones are in a degenerative uh, state already, we need the uh, muscles that are surrounding them, the joints, uh, sorry, the ligaments that are holding them together to be strong. And for that, we need to do strengthening exercises, but under guidance, of course. In the ancillary treatment, uh, she was advised to do hot uh, fermentation thrice a day. Keep a towel roll under the lower back while lying down. Avoid wearing uh, flat uh, shoes or high heel shoes. Suggest uh, lying on the tummy and walk straight in a correct posture. With regards to do's and don'ts. Do's. Ensure that your lower back is supported well with a pillow. Sit with your back straight. Slouching is not allowed because slouching is going to strain the muscles and the joints and this will aggravate the pain. Ensure that your work desk is at a correct and comfortable height. Sit only for short intervals. So you need to get up and walk. So whether it is a work desk because she just gave up her job, she's at home. So again, uh, not sitting in one place, getting up and moving around, you know, using the muscles is also essential to uh, towards the process of recovery. If you are driving for long periods of time, take pit stops as often as possible. Ensure that the mattress you sleep on is firm enough to support the curvature of your spine. What are the don'ts? Something that you just absolutely should not do is do not sit on soft couches because on soft couches you tend to slouch because they don't give a good support to your back. Do not slouch. This will exert your lower back. Avoid lifting heavy objects. Bending to lift anything is a strict no-no. But when we say bending, it is bending at the hips. So do not bend down. If you need to bend to lift something, you need to bend at the knee. Do not wear high-heeled, uncomfortable shoes. Okay, uh, so natrimure was prescribed to this patient along with the auxiliary and ancillary measures and these were the follow-ups we saw. So uh, when the patient came for the follow-up, she said her backache has been aggravated by 15% whereas all other parameters are SQ. So there is no change except for the leucorrhea which was much, much better. 
so because there was an aggravation which did not then go into amelioration and uh, because all the other uh, symptoms of leg pain acidity morning stiffness and her bad sleep we up to the potency of natremure and we gave her 1m and 1m was given again twice a day the next follow up she came she said that she was marginally better in her backache marginally better in the uh, stiffness but again all other parameters were status quo at that point we decided to interject an intercurrent remedy in the form of thuja so thuja 1m was given at bed time one powder and natremure was continued in the 1m potency she came for her next follow up feeling better by 20% in her backache her leg pain was better her morning stiffness and generals were marginally better so now we gave her thuja 1m two powders weekly at bed time and natremure tds the next follow up that she came in there was no change in her complaints so basically what we are seeing is that although the patient is better she is not doing really well or she is not really happy so just for the sake of managing the acute pain that we have uh, that she had we gave her bryonia because bryonia has a specific uh, sphere of action on the joints however we knew that we were not heading in the right direction with natremure so what we decided is that we will review the case again so remember that just because you have selected one remedy which you feel is the constitutional remedy if it is not working for the patient if the patient is not feeling better generally if the patient is not feeling better in her chief complaints you need to review the case to see whether you need to give another remedy to the patient whether the patient uh, whether the remedy that you have given to the patient initially was just a partial similimum and not a complete similimum so we did a review of the case so we saw that although the pain was better the patient did not show much improvement overall so the case was reviewed now what happened uh, during that time was that her husband came in for a case taking as well for himself for his other complaints so when the husband's case was taken there were a lot of things about the patient that came to light it was observed that the patient had too many suppressed emotions which were never expressed even to her husband and there were a lot of indignation experiences with him this seems to point us now do you remember in the repertorization sheet when we saw when we applied all the filters that we had so the uh, filter of thirstlessness that we applied plus the filter of uh, cross repertorization that we applied we finally came to three remedies and the second remedy in the list was staphylococcus and that is why we thought of this remedy because this remedy has a lot of reserved displeasure if you remember staphylococcus okay so let's see we can also read uh, staphylococcus and see what is there let's uh, read staphylococcus also from uh, kens lecture so again what i did was i did a right click i clicked on reference books and then i went on lectures of homeopathy and here while reading you know i we realized that this patient has a lot of uh, indignation so here you see suppressed indignation suited in cases where complaints come from pent up wrath suppressed anger suppressed feelings so great indignations about things done by others or by himself grieves about consequences so uh, there is indignation there is suppressed emotion and there is brooding in staphylococcus which made us realize that the remedy or the right remedy for this patient was not natremure it was staphylococcus so for this patient we gave staphylococcus uh staph was given again 200 uh, tds when she came for her next follow up after 10 days her backache was 
better by 30%. So in a span of just 10 days, her backache had improved a lot. Pain in the leg had improved. Acidity had improved but then got aggravated again. The leucorrhea, however, came back. Sleep had improved. So we know that the generals have started improving. The chief complaint has started improving. So we know that we are on the right track with regards to remedy. He continued with staphysagria. In the next subsequent follow-ups, you can see that at all levels, she is much better. So her backache is much better. Her leg pain is better. Uh, by the time she came, her acidity was much better. Her leucorrhea was better than aggravated. Uh, so we were a little concerned about why the leucorrhea was uh, still a concern, although her chief complaint was better. On observation, we saw that the patient had started improving a lot after STAT was prescribed. Currently, her back pain is 90% better. Acidity is better. No leucorrhea, but leucorrhea is on and off. On observation and on examination, because of her uh, consistent leucorrhea, we told her to do a sonography. We saw that there were fibroids in the uterus. So again, we gave her thuja along with staphysagria because this is a very strong psychotic uh, miasmatic tendency that the patient showed. So now again, thuja was given with uh, staph and now you can see that most of her parameters are fine. They are gone except for the backache which is there but which is uh, under control much much better. Patient is very very happy with Thuja as well as Staphysagria. The potency of Thuja was increased to 1M single dose and Staphysagria was continued in the 200th potency as TDS. What is the learning that we see? The learning from this case is that when a particular remedy works for a certain level, a wiser physician is open to suggestion of changing the remedy. Like we saw that natrium mure worked but only partially. So we had to reconsider the case and review the case to see whether another remedy fitted this patient's picture or not. The role of the intercurrent medicine, in this case Thuja, was very important because Thuja helped to open newer avenues in the patient of getting relief. Such an advanced pathology can be relieved so well with simple homeopathic medicines, giving the patient quality life and mobility to enjoy the finer shades of happiness. Such common medicines can bring about desired results. We don't have to run to rare and unusual remedies to obtain relief. The physician has to be open to the response given by the patient and must be willing to change the prescription as and when required. So we need to be extremely unprejudiced when it comes to remedy prescription. Here, the most important thing is higher potency, frequent repetition. Because the pathology was quite advanced. If you don't give this, the relief will only be partial or it will take a much longer time to obtain relief. And by that time, the patient may not be there with you. He may have shifted to another doctor. Our main concern is that we are able to achieve the right type of results in the shortest possible time. And this is what was done in this case that we see. And... Here we end with uh, the case discussion for lumbar spondylosis. This is the second session of homeopathy cases with Zomio. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this session and you have learned a lot from this session. And uh, we will see you next week with our next case. Thank you. Thank you.